Welcome, everybody. I am very excited to welcome Zach Santiago. Uh, you all know him and love him as Ramon. Ramon, I think we need to do that. Uh, please, please welcome a very busy man who I appreciate stopping by, uh, Zach Santiago. Now, my pleasure, Alan. Thanks for having me. Thanks for your patience organizing this. Thanks for welcoming me to your platform. Um, yeah, and I'm, I know um, some of the girls from the show have been on it, and I, I hear great things about the show. And uh, any chance I get to connect with our fans and with our postables and our people out there in the interwebs, then I always make my best efforts. So great to meet you. Thanks for having me. Likewise. And um, <clears throat> again, postables, one, once I let them know, and our Facebook group, love you out there, everybody. Uh, once I let people know that you're going to be on the program, immediately comments started pouring in. Oh my God, we love Zach so much. Please, <laughs> please, please let him know how much we love Zach. So I'm letting you know, just passing it on. Uh, well, it's reciprocated right back at him, all of them, all of you out there. Thank you. Much love to you all. Perfect. And um, as it has become a tradition on the show, uh, I did that uh, first for uh, for Crystal when she was on. I basically just wanted to do something nice and i saw a pattern in her name that was a combination of you know rita and crystal and you know uh, uh crystal's uh, last name low which became owl so i created a design for her that became a mug and then i did uh, something uh you know for specific for a uh, kristen uh so the first thing that people were asking me uh, aside from saying you know please say hello to zach and how much we love him is where's your design for zach so I had to wreck my brain to figure out a design specifically for you because it was not easy. But uh, the, more, the more I listened to the interviews that you have done, and by the way, uh, excellent job, everybody. I, I, I've listened to, I think, three and a half hours of interviews that you have oh, done. No, uh, no it's, it's, it was wonderful and inspiring and peaceful and made me question you know, what I should be doing with my life and why I'm not as busy and dedicated as I should be. So all of that was, was wonderful. And learning about you and knowing what I know about Ramon, uh, one pattern came out. So I ordered a mug. You know, I have my Postables mug. This is my Postables mug. Um, nice. I ordered one with your design. It was supposed to arrive today. It did not. It's arriving tomorrow. So here is your design. Joie de vivre. I love it. So because again, we're it's we're incorporating. Yeah. We're yeah, we're incorporating uh, your initials, uh, uh, Z and S. And if there is one word that would describe you and Ramon, it would be zest. Uh, and wow. that's that's I love it. Um, became your design. So Very nice. you're, so you're an artist of many of many media. You're an mm -hmm. artist, you're an actor, you're a performer, you're a content creator, and you're a designer too. This mm -hmm. is you're putting the rest of us to shame, Alan. But thank you. Uh, I'm very honored. Thank you. For recognizing my zest, my perhaps slight lemony zest. A little citrus in there, I'm sure. Just a, a bit of tang for the yeah. masses. Well, we, we all need a bit of tang. It can be all sweetness. It has to uh, it has to have more flavor. And again, you and Ramon both have full uh, filled with flavor. But um, I appreciate your kindness. And, and again, watching the interviews and having you uh, talk about your life and about the things that you have done in your life. You know, being a dancer uh, and the dedication that you have to that. Being a DJ, being an actor, being a minister. Uh, those are just four of the many things that you're doing while, you know, right now you're continuing your education. You're still working and you're very, very busy boxing, you know, thrown in there. All of these things made me, who is a pretty busy guy, you know, having my regular job plus acting plus now an e-commerce site uh, where I'm putting all these designs up plus being a, you know, a parent, all of these things are like, wait. I need to do more. Zach is doing all of these things. <laughs> like I need to do more. Well, so, listen, I didn't say I'm good at any of those things. I just do a lot of things. It doesn't mean I'm good. But um, but yeah, it's uh, effort is, is is there's no ability in effort. And uh, so if there's anything that anybody out there wants to try or thinks they should do, uh, then do it. 
you know, and hopefully it's something with nobility too, and something that's going to help somebody or brighten something or somebody's day, you know, but yeah, try it. We're all capable of anything we want to do. So, yeah. And then if you get to be actually good at one of those things, that's, that's, that's the icing on the cake, but you'll never know. And you know, my beloved manager, Elena always says to me, you, you're not going to win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket. You know, like, so if you do, if you want to do something like, it's like, ah, oh, man, but this is so out of sight, but, but you'll never know if you can reach that, that distance or that pinnacle or that achievement if you don't start that journey. So yeah, to all of you out there, if there's something you've considered or someone you want to help out, or you think maybe I can get up early on, on the weekend and go down and, and, uh, and, and, you know, to the, to the homeless shelter with food and help hand out food, um, but I got this and I'm tired and I've got to work. Ah, just go and do it. You know what I mean? Just just keep trying, keep reaching. And um, yeah, go to school or take a dance class or do something online. Everything's online. If Alan can do his stuff online and I can do this online and I can do school online, then we can do kind of anything online. So yeah, everybody, maybe that's what we're going to do after this show is people are going to think of one thing that they've been thinking about this last year or during pandemic that they haven't done that they've considered and they're going to make a move towards that when you finish watching the show take your first step yeah That's um, the and uh the the only thing that i would add to that beautiful uh phrasing is take something that you can do and you can get that sense of achievement that's not a huge step because you when you build those in and you build success then you can uh, do more and more when mm -hmm. i started studying and in my you know mid 40s i decided in uh in addition to the acting things i wanted to get certifications in human resources and some other stuff i basically said okay i'm going to be on the train traveling from you know vernon hills suburb of chicago to downtown chicago every day and it's going to take me an hour each way i'm need to be doing something productive so i took a small certification that i knew i was going to be able to finish in a couple of weeks uh, i did that one I got my success. I took a big one that took me months to finish. But if I didn't do the small one, I wouldn't have gotten into that uh, into that groove. Uh, so when you're taking that step, take a smaller step and then continue going forward. After that. That's, ex that's exactly it. That's it. Yeah. Don't don't. Well, what's it? Don't bite up more than you can eat. You know, don't or more than yeah. you can chew. You know. So yeah, that's it. Take, but it doesn't have to be baby steps. But yeah, I mean, don't jump off the cliff. Just like start looking over the cliff. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Slowly, slowly, <laughs> slowly going down on a rope over the cliff. But at least you're getting to the you're getting to where you're trying to go, right? So or climb, climb. How's that? Just don't fall. Climbing, climbing is good. Or just again, face face your fear, right? I I think uh, you and I, you know, as actors and uh, as as people being able to face your fear and being able to do something out of the ordinary you discover so much about yourself and then you discover just how supported you are by the universe and i to me those have been the most exhilarating moments now i still have not done cliff diving and i still have not done you know skydiving and i'm okay not doing that but in yeah. in my own way breaking beyond the fear barrier was plenty for me to feel uh, very very comfortable uh, about myself yeah Good, good, good. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, Elena, you mentioned Elena, so I just wanted to, to finish that part. Uh, in a couple of your interviews, you were showing a beautiful cup that Elena gave you uh, yeah. that you can drink coffee and tea from. So I'll send you your design. You'll have one more uh, in case you want to vary. Wow, that's great. Because yeah. right now I'm in, I'm with um, it's kind of boring hotel. It's not bad actually for for a hotel yeah. mug. They got different yeah. sizes. It's my kind of my cappuccino one, but it's, um, it's no, um, you know, it's no Allen design and it's no Elena design either. So, um, I'll be looking forward to that and, um, maybe I can do a post for sure. I'll do a post when I, when I receive it, when I have, when it's inaugurated with, with its first beverage, which will probably be good Italian espresso bean. Yeah. Nice dark roast. Perfect. Um, well, after we'll talk about <laughs> which size you want and which color. But moving on, um, out of all of the things that you're doing, and you and you kind of mentioned in jest, uh, you know, 
not, not being good in the many things that you're doing, which I completely disagree with. But if you were to pick one thing that you think you are the best at, what would that be? Of things that I do sort of like um, profession-wise or hobby or recreation-wise, you know what? I, I, I think I think that's hard. I don't know. I, that's maybe up for other people to judge what they think I'm good at or not, and and wh whether they whether their opinions, whether their judgments, they think I should continue doing those things or not. Probably is not going to affect me because I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Um, mm -hmm. But I think probably a better question would be out of everything that I do, if there's only one thing that I could continue yeah. doing, and then I still don't know if I'm good at it. Um, or I don't think I could ever be good enough at it, but probably if there's one thing I could continue doing um, mm -hmm. would be service work. Yeah. Would be would be um, anything engaging uh, benevolence towards others, especially those the most in need. That would be the one thing that I would continue doing if I could only do one thing moving forward. Yeah, everything else is lovely. I'll always be an artist because it's my identity. But if there's only one thing I could do, um, yeah, it would be service to others, I would say. That answer I knew, and that's actually one of the reasons why I didn't ask that specific question, because I, <laughs> I knew what your answer would be. So, uh, and then... Great right, unpredictable. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, because that's who you are. <clears throat> you are, uh, again, the, the one overwhelming... Uh, theme uh, out of all of your interviews and anytime you speak is the caring and love for others and being able to uh, being able to do something for others. So for me, it was a no brainer. I knew exactly what you would answer in terms of what you would do if you couldn't do anything else. No, so I would be happy that that's the impression that that you've kind of gathered of me. That's wonderful. Yeah. That made my day. Uh, uh, and I think the community knows that, and that's probably one of the other reasons why they love you so much. So um, speaking of the community, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, perhaps there are things that you can share about the upcoming film that is premiering October 17th on Hallmark. Uh, is there anything you can share? Well, you know, speaking of our community, before we go into the tantalizing thing, I do want to make a special note, um, um, a thoughtful note to to one of our postable community, um, our friend Pamela Cloud, who has recently lost her husband of 23 years, Jason Cloud. So um, my condolences, of course, is that broad term we use um, in our vernacular to herself and her family, but also um, just, uh, and I've kind of been in touch with her, but just to, to know, so she knows that um, we're all thinking of her and she's definitely in my intercessions and in my thoughts. Um, and in our thoughts right now, all of us watching this, but also if anybody who's a prayerful person can keep her and Jason's soul and their family in our, in our prayers, she's, she's, she's one of us. She's a beloved member of our, of our group. And so for Pamela and her family and for, um, Jason's repose. Um, may he rest in peace. Yeah. Great. Uh, so, um, but but not not trying to put a, any sort of a somber turn on anything. Um, celebrate his life, and on that moment of celebration, we have a new birth, which is our new SSD movie, which yep. is in its final stages of incubation right now, and it shall see the light of day as this sparkling young infant. On in about well, what is it? Two months? About two months? A little under two months? Yeah. Um, Even you know, I, and you know the industry can't arrive early, can't arrive premature, and hopefully it won't be late because that means there's some some reason that it got rescheduled. Um, and I tell you, it's that good that there's no way this would ever be preempted. There's rumors this might be our best project ever. Um, Ramon is in it. I don't want to give it away too much. Um, but you know, our stalwart, magnificent four, um, they are the, the pillars, you know, and they are standing tall and proud and erect, holding up this platform, this, this ceiling, this Sistine ceiling that our beloved Martha has painted for us. It's, it's a very strong script. It's, a, it's going to be a great movie. Um, 
yeah, Gregory's in it, of course. Um, yeah, you'll see some familiar faces. Um, you know, I'm always a little reticent about about um, speaking too much on details. So maybe you can pry something or sort of like um, remind me of something and I'll consider what is safe or not to to speak on. But, you know, this day and age, Alan, it's like with, we got to be a little protective. We don't want to spoil stuff for you guys, right? We want you to enjoy it. We want you to go oh, like that all the time and not like, oh, there it is because you knew it was coming, you know? So that's one of the reasons it's, we're thinking about you guys too. We don't want to spoil anything. That's very true. The the one thing, and again, you know, Ramon in every, in every uh, film has to have a different job. So <laughs> in speaking with, uh, and forgive me girls, uh, either Kristen or Crystal, uh, it dawned on me of what a perfect job, I think it was Crystal, of what a perfect job for Ramon would be maybe in this film or the next one hopefully there is a next one and many more after that and i think now with uh, with rita and uh, and norman uh, being married at some point they may need a marriage counselor and who better to go to than to <laughs> someone yeah, so. ramon would be an amazing counselor we know that I, and maybe, maybe he is in this movie maybe he is but then do they need counseling already I hope That's, not. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, so this is the sleuth work we're doing here. Yeah. Ramon would be the go-to counselor because he's trusted by all of them except yeah. by Norman, of course. Norman. Um, and that would be part of what's funny. It's like I can't yeah. believe this guy's giving me marriage advice. Um, but you know that Ramon would be, or perhaps is, the marriage counselor. But then, wow, are they on on the rocks already? Or, okay. but hey, who knows? Maybe they are. Maybe that's the crisis. Maybe we don't uh, know. Well, oh, we, we, just we, know, we, we know they're buying a house. You know, we know that there is a marriage happening. So we know a couple of things. We know, you know, Shane's uh, mother is uh, coming in. Everybody wants to know if Shane's sister is going to show up. Everybody in the community, by the way, wants to know when Ramon is finally going to have a real love interest aside from having, you know, multiple girls on his arms uh, from time to time. So those are the things that we're all wondering about. I think that's a whole spin-off series in itself. It should be. I think, I think there's a lot of content there. I think we could, there's a lot of storylines and threads we could explore. I think, I think um, you know, but you never know. Maybe you'll see that introduction, and then that's where the spin-off goes. So, um, yeah. People will be very excited when they see who and what type of grand figure could captivate and smite Ramon in such a sense as to turn his focus from otherworldly things and from universal things onto one divine muse. What type of figure could do that? What woman? Wow. Mm. It's... It's it's a great idea, uh, one that I, it's one of my questions. Yeah. And when we talk about questions, by the way, here's a list. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Uh, it's one of my questions of what kind of a person would be that match for Ramon. But yeah, it would be, it would be a great spinoff. Martha does not need any of my help in writing or, or content creation, but we, we, we can hope that some of these ideas will, will make it. Um, the one thing that I found uh, humorous is that, again, uh, as actors, we audition for many different things. Uh, you know, I am at the precipice of my career. <laughs> you, you are, you know, much farther along. Uh, but you said about precip precipi precipices. Um, sure. It doesn't have to be fearful or daunting. You it's just not. take take a slow step and just yeah. traverse down, scale down that over that precipice to you precipice till you land at the that lush garden that's waiting for you at the base, right? Or scale, scale even higher. You know, maybe that precipice is a little rock shelf and you can keep going and you'll get to the top and there'll be, um, there'll be those um, snow cones and um, ice mango trees. So don't be worried about the precipice, keep going. I like that. Uh, we, we can put that on my vision board. Uh, it, <laughs> it sounds great. <laughs> um, the audition process, because you've auditioned for many things. 
And one of the things, they, one of the roles that you audition for is Norman. Uh, so you auditioned for that role in the very beginning before anything uh, you know, kind of came out. In uh, the few interviews, okay, so there are interviews. Yeah, in, that you, I, I think I auditioned for Norman and Oliver. And Oliver, yeah. I think. So I know for sure one of them, for sure. Definitely. And if, I think, yeah. I think, I think, um, I'm pretty sure both. I th I'm pretty sure that I, I read for both of them, not on, on the same in the same session, but um, but yeah, Norman, yeah, yeah. So to me, and you know Jeff, and you've known Jeff for a while. You've known Jeff for a while. You've known Crystal for a while. You know, uh, kind of going going back. To me, and knowing that Jeff is incredibly funny and very very uh, interesting person himself, I wonder if when you guys are just hanging around on any of these uh, sets. If either of you looked at each other and said, okay, let's flip. I'm going to be Norman. You're going to be a Ramon. I, I would just love to see the dynamic of going in reverse of how that would be. That would be very funny. Um, yeah. There's a danger there is that um, in just a few moments, he would be better at Ramon than me and funnier. And then he wouldn't hold that over me. And he would do it just like naturally and easily, but then I would be left with this kind of like heavy insecurity that I'm not, I don't deserve my job. And I'm, I'm not, I've been trying to become Ramon and carry Ramon inside me for years. And this man in a mo instant has just shown me like, no, this is how it should be done, son. So mm -hmm. that's the danger why that, why I don't know if I should enter into that, um, that little um sh uh, not charade that little experiment but i will say to continue on um young mr gustafson you know people have asked me um in, in non-ssd related interviews about like what's some of the most challenging acting roles mm -hmm. one of the most challenging things for me um i can get to like some head like i can get to like dramatic moments and hold them and stay in that and be committed i don't want to say easily but you know these are things we do as actors but for me, when something is really funny, trying to like be the straight man and not break is is can be has I know it's hard because Gustafson is my nemesis because one of the hardest things for me in my career as an actor, I've been acting a long time, my friends, mm -hmm. is to keep a straight face when I'm acting with Jeff because he's so I'm I'm glad you guys think he's funny because he's so funny to me. Like he's the funniest. Sometimes when we're offset, he just even has to make a look or like a comment on what anyone else is doing or saying. It's not even like belligerent, but just his timing, his expressions, his just reactions. It, he's the like one of the funniest people I've, I've ever come across in my life. So um, yeah, he'd be better at Ramon. He'd be funnier at Ramon. It'd be easy for him to do. And then I'd be a shadow of myself and I'd probably back out of the room slowly with some tears. So oh. that's my thoughts on that. Yeah. Well, then maybe don't do it, even though I'm not sure I agree. <laughs> I but agree I do have to say, though, my remote, my Norman that I had prepared was very different than his. And I liked him, what I remember. And, you know, because Martha wrote these characters, they're so rich, all of them. So yeah. as an actor, Alan, you know, when you get material or a character, it's like, oh, I can do something with this. So I think anybody would come up with something fun, you know, if they got that Norman thing. Would never be as good as or what Jeff does, but because it's the characters are written so well, you could just like say those lines and it would be it would be fun. So I I, I liked being able to create my own version of Norman, um, but yeah, very different from Jeff's. That's for sure. Uh, there there has to be I, I don't know if it was a self tape or it was it was taped somewhere. I would have loved to see that. To yeah. see uh, you trying Norman, to see you trying Oliver, that would have been really enjoyable. To watch. Yeah, it was. I know Martha was at either the one for Norman or for Oliver. Like a lot of times when we read for things, like sometimes mm -hmm. execs or depends where it's casting, you might be doing it on a tape with a local casting director or a studio and it gets sent to that place. Nowadays, we do things on Zoom and like chemistry reads and things like that on Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, but Martha was there for at least one of the sessions um, for either Norman or something. And so that was my first meeting with her. And she, man, she's so gracious, isn't she? She's just 
yeah, it just makes everyone feel at ease and just to do what they're gonna they're gonna do. And 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 even though she she's not precious about these characters, but she knows them because they're they're part of her, each and every mm -hmm. one of them. So to be able to like just have a simple audition, Alan, you know, as an actor, like to get someone's kind of feedback or react in a way you can kind of feel if you're on track or not. And and if they like some things you do, they could tweak you a bit. And so that was really a blessing to have her. Very cool. Um, yeah. So what what's it like, uh, you know, working with Hallmark? Because uh, I already told my agent, I, I gave her four things. These are the four things that you need to be submitting me for. Hallmark is at the top of that list. Like anything Hallmark I want to do because that's my vibe, it's my energy, <laughs> I want to do Hallmark. So what is it like to actually be working on a set and with the company? Well, my, I mean, I, I guess my main experience with Hallmark is signed, sealed, and delivered. Yeah. I, I don't think I've done anything like, uh, you know, previous or in between that's been a Hallmark production. Not, um, and that's great because kind of like, in our world, on our channel, our network, and our fans, they kind of, they know many of us as this person, and it's not always like, doesn't behoove anybody to, but I'm Jimmy in this show, and I'm this and that, but it's like, no, you're Ramon, stop it, Zach. Um, you know, so um, so I, I would say, like, I, it kind of goes in tandem. I I mean, one, my if SSD is my Hallmark experience, and I mean, it's one of the greatest, like, I love Ramon, I love Science Sealed and Delivered, I love our fan base. I love our feedback. I love our support. Um, I, I look at the network. We're doing it. We just did another show. We've been cranking these out for years and getting great support. And, you know, my only concept is good. It's for me. Yeah, work for Hallmark's great. <laughs> you know, I, lo I love it. And Ramon, as an actor, uh, and, you know, when I started watching Science Hill Delivery, and as soon as Ramon came out, I'm like, okay, that's a really fun character to play. And then, you know, they started reusing it. They started recurring in all of the different changes. I'm like, this is the perfect job uh, from an acting perspective is ability to play with a character and to come back with some new spin and a new thing. It's just, it's it's a dream. So that, that was my impression of Ramon from the beginning. Yeah, you nailed it. That's what it's been. You know, you get it. You're, you're an actor, you're a performer. It's, uh, you don't always get to do that. I mean, we get to wear a lot of different hats and, you know, play different roles, whether it's it's the only the audition or we end up booking it, you know, and uh, and maybe there's more iterations or episodes or seasons or something. But either way, we get to, you know, change our hats a lot. But when it's one character that kind of like morphs and shifts and grows over time and you get to as well, and he's always up to something completely different. You're not the static, like, I'm the precinct sergeant grouchy but you know fine reluctantly okay but i'm warning you you mess up one more time if higgins you're on you're you know you're on beat you're walking you're on bench duty desk duty you know what i mean it's like you're just that grouchy sergeant all the time no ramon is like it's like he's still ramon but he's always something different and that's absolutely unique you know to have a character like that it's my only experience of it ever and uh it's it's amazing and then from uh, again getting a little you know acting technical and nerdy for a second, but uh, I remember the most fun I've ever had was playing a character who's big, because I originally come from Jim Carrey's school of acting, which you know is is huge, and Jim is incredibly tough, and he can go tiny and be brilliant. But I I loved and enjoyed going big. What I've noticed is that I would you know be this ridiculous character. I would walk into a room and I would go much bigger than I thought I <clears throat> I need. And then I'm watching it and it's twice as little as I thought I was doing. So right. on camera, it's not as big as you think it is. So did you ever have, because you know Ramon uh, at some <laughs> sometimes has to be big. Did you ever see that, oh, I actually need to go bigger? Is that possible? Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. Sometimes it's all in our head, isn't it? Sometimes yeah. we're like, we're like editing ourselves or metering ourselves and thinking this is gonna like this is everyone's gonna pick up on this and, and yeah. but it actually turns out to be more subtle um uh than than you intended and and other times you think you're being kind of in the park and safe but then the director will be like bring it down a little and you realize oh man um yeah, yeah it's it's a tough one um 
And sometimes it's like you're pushing the boundaries and then that becomes how that character is going because it kind of gets accepted. So you keep pushing the envelope a bit. Um, yeah. And if you didn't do that, then the, bo- the lines would kind of stay a little more uh, rigid, a little more contained. So it depends what leeway and what relationship you have with the creator. And then, you know, if you're working with a great network like Hallmark, where they, 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 they enjoy the growth of characters, they know what the, the, the personality, the identity of the program is. And so, you know, we're trying to, to not completely blow this universe out of the box every time. It has to be a world, you know, yeah. because we've created something that people can follow. You can't come back to the next movie and everything's totally different and people are, doing it like x-files or something or 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 you know or fringe or something or and then the next one you're doing it like sesame street you know and it's got to be you got to have consistency right um so it all depends um but that's why you work with the you know the people the showrunners and uh you know great creative producers like martha who who just make sure that the palette stays the same you know yeah. from 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 episode to episode to movie to movie and that means that the characters have to kind of stay in that thing Mm. so i rely on that sort of like hand of god in a sense to sort of um if i am straying too much because i'm having too much fun um or if it's too internal and it's not really being how it should which is maybe a little bigger i know someone's there to help me to save me to sort of like pop up my my feather boa a bit you know or just sort of like shh pat down my hair a little bit, keep it a little tighter, you know? Um, I think more or less my instincts are pretty good at this stage in my career, but sometimes you just need that help, that, you know, that that person. And um, that's where a good director, a good visionary is really important. Yeah. I agree. You know, I remember one time I was doing, I was doing uh, two shows. Um, one was Robson Arms, which was this, this great, uh, Canadian comedy show. We had uh, where you met Kevin. Off. <clears throat> What's that? Where you met Kevin? That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Kevin Fair. That's right. I met him on that show. Um, one of his first directing. I think his first time directing television. Um, and but I was I was a regular on another show too. And that might have been um, might have been the assistants. The series I did with Nick Cannon back in the day. After Nick did um, not Nick Cannon with um, Michael B. Jordan. I did. Um, yeah underclassmen with nick cannon at the same time around the same time yeah michael b we, we, he had just done the wire and now he's doing this comedy thing and so we were on this show called the assistants and it was really really broad <clears throat> and i remember because of trying to juggle schedules sometimes i was on one show in the in that morning and they the, the scheduling they had to like so they sw- so then i came to do the other one in the afternoon they're both filming in the same city and um and the director, when I got to the second show, had to be like, man, take a deep breath. Remember, who you, bring it down. Because I was way out there, way over, because I was charged from the other character, the other show, the other energy. It's like mm-hmm. you came watching Jim Carrey doing one of his huge, wild, zany guys to doing one of the more dramatic roles he did. And it's like, yeah, and, and you'd think I would know better. But I was so in that um, that energy that I needed that help and reminder that even though I was saying the right lines um, and being and wearing the right wardrobe of the new character, it was just way way out of the ballpark. Um, so um, I know for me that I, I I do need to rely on on that on that sort of steadiness, that guidance sometimes. Um, Hopefully not too often, but yeah, that's a good, that, there's a new personal example of it for me, an anecdote. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of SSD, um, every, I, I'm definitely not the only one. I think it's the majority of the, of our, of our community that we cry at these movies, uh, which I find a wonderful release and I'm really happy about it. Um, I know you know, shooting schedule is weird and you can be in certain scenes uh, and maybe you get a chance to watch other scenes that you're not a part of, but um, is there a particular film in which you found yourself teary-eyed just because of the material? Just reading it or being in the scene? 
Yeah, I, I know when I talked to uh, Kristen, she said, you know, every <laughs> every time they do uh, a read through. Read through, uh, I was just going to say, man. Yeah. Say, yeah, I mean, that's writing, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I'm not one of those actors who can cry really easy. And, you know, sometimes you just have to and you kind of got to repeat it. And some of my uh, my uh, men and women, um, they, they're, they're good at doing that. I can get to places, but it's not like an, uh, a button that I can push. Um, but I definitely am a sensitive person and and I get affected. And and so. You know, I can be sometimes reading a, po a poem or watching a movie or watching TV or just listening to a piece of music and, uh, and I'll get emotional and however that, um, sh you know, shows itself then um, is what it is. And but sometimes just reading and doing a read through, you know, will put me to that place. And, and you think like, well, actually, I don't have to say this because our fans know, but, you know, Science Sealed and Delivered is, is funny. It's a funny show. It's drama too and romance, but it's it's also kind of tongue in cheeky. You you don't think it's always going to be a tearjerker, but it'll take you from moments where you're just howling and cackling, laughing, to then you're just reaching for a Kleenex, and that's before it's even being filmed. You reading it can put you in that place. So again, that's the power of the word, of the writing, of the imagery, of that. That's the strength of the writing that it puts you, you can imagine it and you see it and you feel it and you're with these people and you're like, oh man. And that's even just these new characters that are introduced in that episode, in that movie, in this story. You're already with them and you're being brought along with them and then you suffer with them and you're rooting for them. And then when you find out what's happening, you see what's happening, you're like, no. And that's just, that's just great writing, man. That's Martha. So, yeah, it's, it truly is. I, and I don't think I've I've experienced any other series uh, of films or just uh, you know TV shows where I've cried as much. Um, hmm. It's just it doesn't happen, and I kind of got used to not doing that anymore because it you know certain things just don't hit you. And then I started watching Science of the Lord. Boom, <laughs> everyone. Uh, the biggest cry, by the way, if anybody's wondering, was when uh, when Oliver, you know, figured out that it's an angel. Uh, for me, I was done. I, I I knew I had a feeling that that was going to happen as soon as it was, uh, it just came up, I'm done. So I think during that film, I cried at least three times. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. that was heavy. <laughs> that was heavy beautiful it was so so beautiful and then actually i want to talk to you about faith because um i'm not religious you know i was i was baptized in the ukrainian orthodox church by my babysitter when i was a, a baby and i didn't know about that until i was like in my 20s my parents told me uh i come from a jewish uh, heritage we're not religious i'm very spiritual so i i i have my relationship with god and angels and so for me all of that was beautiful and I wanted more of it. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of my designs, I got so excited uh, because I took, you know, Rita, uh, Shane, uh, Oliver, and Norman, and then I started seeing patterns in the in the letters. And one, two of the patterns were Amen and Halo. Uh, and to me, divine delivery and finding those patterns, I, I was glowing myself, and I couldn't believe that I found those patterns. So. Um, to me, faith being intertwined all throughout the series is a huge addition would be the wrong word uh, of saying it, but it's just a huge part of it that I love and enjoy so much, regardless of whether I'm, I'm religious, whether I'm Christian, whether I'm Catholic, I'm not. And to me, it's all a great, great uh, guiding hand that I love. Well, there's there's something to be said for that. Then, if if you know, that, and you're right, faith is a, is integral, and it's a kind of underlying. You can always feel that that presence, right? His presence um, in these stories, um, um, especially as the, the the moral compass, you know. Um, but there's something to be said for that. Um, if if you don't necessarily identify as being faithful, but you but you recognize the the intrinsic 
you know, faith that's in, in the show and, and, and it resonates with you and you appreciate it and it leaves you longing, like you said, like you always kind of want more of that, that, mm -hmm. that feeling, then that, that definitely, that definitely tells you something, doesn't it, Alan, that there's something mm -hmm. in you that, that responds, right, to that call or to that feeling. And, right. and, and, and if thoughts of spirituality and, and amen and halo are things that kind of make you consider or ideas or thoughts or imagery that stick in you, then, um, you know, something happened when you were baptized, right? There was uh, there's a water that that touched you, but there's something else that touched you, right? So, I mean, that's food for thought. But um, whenever we kind of open our an awareness or an acceptance or an understanding, uh, you know, from my own personal perspective, is that you know God is with all of us, right? He's with all of us on earth, no matter what our faith is. Um, whether we have found our relationship or our dialogue with him, um, God, God is God is with every single person. So, um, and sometimes people can live a whole life with not 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 being able to talk to him um, the way that they could have, or to be to to hear him in a way they could have. But he, but you know we're not we're never alone from. From his light, you know. So, so um, without trying to proselytize too much, and to be absolutely respectful to everyone's own personal thing, <clears throat> I think I think it's really interesting that you that you enjoy that part of the show and that you feel it and you recognize it, and it doesn't threaten you, and it doesn't turn you off, and it actually maybe adds a a, a nice ingredient and a nice flavor. So that's something for you to think about too. Um, the precipice doesn't have to be that high, you know, when you know that. There's always a hand. There's always a hand underneath to catch you, and there's always a hand uh, on your shoulder to, like, to, to keep you to keep you safe, right? Yeah, and that's uh, you know <clears throat> when you were talking about the things that happen throughout your life and the the not uh, easy things to overcome that happen throughout your life. Uh, it was always faith that kept you going, and uh, for me, it's the same, right? So uh, knowing. Uh, there is a God, knowing and having the relationship with uh, with the angels the way that I do. Uh, anytime something happens where it's dramatic, where it's life-shaking and you have to get through it, that's always, in, in a very literal sense, in a tactile sense, it's the light. It's that light that allowed me to get out of that and to get back to being me and to move on and to deal with whatever comes up. So that has always been a part of it. I, I was very happy to see that it's always been a part of yours because, you know, having to overcome what you have to overcome, um, I, I don't know how you would have been able to do it without it. Oh, that's a very nice way of putting it, Alan. That's that's great. That's I'm glad that, um, yeah, yeah, it's nice. Um, getting, <clears throat> getting, you know, kind of back into the SSD for a second. Uh, before we wrap up, because I, I know I, you know you and I could talk for for a while, but I know you're very busy, and I don't want. To I, I feel busy. we click, man. I feel we click. It's not hard talking to you. I like it. Thank you. Likewise, uh, absolutely. Um, on the SSD, people are always wondering. You know, Ramon has so many different jobs and has done so many things. Is there one that you, Zach, in particular, um, would identify most with, or has the most uh, fun playing? I have some ideas knowing your background, but I'd love to know which one that would be. Well, the ones that he's appeared um, doing, but there's also yeah. like we visited his home and then other time, I think when other people speak about him, we find out even more things, right? Yeah. From his past or his present that yeah. we don't actually see him doing, right? Because we, again, that's another spinoff to know. actually, I show all the things that Ramon can do. Um, so I think probably the most intriguing thing, which I think needs to be explored, is the matador. The matador, right? The bullfighter. That would be, <clears throat> if nothing else, then to put on that incredible traje de luz, right? The, <laughs> the suit of light, right? That um, even I could just lounge in a mat matador, you know, full costume then that's paradise um but yeah i that's something that i i is very intriguing 
uh, being a pilot, I'm thinking of things that um, are madness. I mean, his introduction as a dance instructor, I spent a lot of my, my life as a dancer yeah. and around dancers and with dancers. And mm -hmm. I love and support the dance community. And um, I mean, that's like, that's art and athletics and music all combined, right? Um, mm -hmm. But um, so I guess being a dance instructor kind of like was a good, for me, just a kind of good shoes to slip into. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I did like his his uh, unique take on the weather broadcasting um, because I'm such a like useless at technical stuff. I mean, I started DJing with like real records, right, and real needles on real turntables, mm -hmm. and then when we switched to um, software mm -hmm. that, that we still can use a real record, but it has no, it's got a code on it, a time code, it has no actual sound. But what it does is it, those turntables that are plugged in a hardware box, which is plugged in your laptop and all your MP3s are there. Instead of taking the record off, you change what that record is with the MP3, but then you can use it and it manipulates that sound wave. But so now we're dealing with like computer and technical stuff and like, I'm, I'm the worst. Like if I can play music, I play drums, you know, I play piano, if I can tactilely do something, that's great, but once you bring that sort of like software and stuff, so I think being the weather guy, trying to like figure out the icons and hit the button when things change and know how the screens go and know, I think that's fun for me to think about Ramon like doing that stuff because um, in my mind, he's not a whiz at those things either. Like he would build a computer out of like nuts and bolts. Well, maybe that's what Norm, he would get Norman to build a computer. Out yeah. of nuts and bolts and, and, but I think Ramon is not like this so, you know computer savant i think he um uh sort of um embellishes and flamboyantly just sort of like um wills his way through doing things um more though than being absolutely proficient at any of these things so um i think of the weather guy is, is kind of fun for me um or a news broadcaster because there's so much in there for him to mess up or misinterpret or mispronounce or mm -hmm. um neglect to mention you know and he's do, when he's giving headlines and things uh mm -hmm. and get locations wrong so that 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 was pretty fun for me um I don't know, man. It's a tough question, Alan. Everything he does, I'm always like, oh, yeah, of course. Of course. And when you guys see this episode or this iteration, this new, the the new movie, yeah. and you're going to see what he's up to because he's up to something he has to be. Of course. And then you're going to be like, obviously, yeah. obviously that's remote. Yeah. Just like every other thing that you've seen him do. So um, maybe this will be his future. We'll see. We'll take a poll. How about this? After this movie comes out, yeah. We'll do a poll, and everyone can can write into you or cook, so, you know, go go onto your um any of your your platforms, and yeah. say give their top five things that Ramon should do, whether he's done them already, we've seen them or heard about them or what they think he should do, and we'll do a poll. And you never know when that gets back to the brass, right? That might get back to Martha, and she'd be like, okay, if we do another yeah. one, we're gonna do what the fans want, Ramon. You know who knows. Who knows? Listen, I, I already gave one suggestion, so we'll we'll continue playing with the poll and see. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, the the Metador would be very interesting and right up your alley with uh, with ballet, with flamenco, with pasadoble, with uh, all of that. It's just it's perfect. I think that will work really really well. And you, the person has to be uh, in your uh, type of uh, body frame and shape in order to actually look good as a matador, and that would work well. So I, I'm all for that. I wish they'd do some, uh, some kind of, I, I think a spin-off, and uh, maybe we'll create a new hashtag of Ramon spin-off. Uh, you know, I did a short boxing movie where my character's fighting name was El Matador. So it was called Ganji, and you might be able to find it online. It, it was um, G-A-N-J-Y, and it's got some great actors in it, Alec. Alex Ponovic is in it. He's a pretty big actor. He's pretty dope. Uh, my friend um, Ben Emanuel wrote and directed and starred in it. Uh, Donnie Lucas is in it. Um, it's a very, it's a short film and it's dramatic and it's actually quite powerful. But my character is called El Matador, and mm -hmm. and for me in real life, as my boxing, as you as most of you are aware, I'm not, you know, really stout, muscular, built man like say Jeff Gustafson. 
Um, I'm very tall and slender. So because boxing works in weight classes, everybody I always fought was if they're as tall as me and long as me, then they're skinny. But yeah. generally, most people aren't this inhumanly scrawny as me. Um, my dad said one day, my mom actually said, one day you'll be a, a real man. Um, still wait for that day. Um, but um, but yeah, so most guys are shorter and thicker and stouter, kind of like a bull coming out of Matador. And so me, my, my game's always been my movement. I mean, I pop, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I pop. But it's always been having that distance, right? My sword, right? Yeah. Mi espada. You know, so I've always been able to like stick that bull as it's coming at me. So ironically, like my my fight style is kind of like a matador as it is, right? It um, works. Uh, yeah. In terms of your boxing, and actually, you know, uh, I've I've mentioned this many times. Uh, I I have not done boxing. I've done martial arts, different styles before. And when I started acting, I saw a very direct relationship. And I thought that the curriculum of every acting school has to be boxing uh, as a part of it, not just you know for on-screen fighting and being able to uh, to do stunts, but because it's a relationship, it's a scene. A boxing match is a scene between two people. You have to be in the eyes, you have to pay attention to the body language, you have to be fully present, and that teaches exactly the skill that you need as an actor. So I thought boxing. The fact that you did boxing for a long time, the fact that you did uh, dancing for a long time, when you finally got into acting, I thought those two things would have helped you to get into the uh, into the flow faster. Lovely, Alan. You're right, and I agree with you. It, it really is. Boxing is like that, and in, in in a way, and dance like a a pas de deux in, in ballet, right? When it's just the two performers, they mm -hmm. they have to be so they have to trust each other so much. And it, exactly, it's timing, it's body position, it's that economy of distance between them, and then knowing each other's weight and being able to respond and move with that. And and boxing's the same, and martial arts, if it's like anything that's one-on-one, -on -one, it's like boxing, like when you can't pass the ball, right? <laughs> like people come and crowd you and swarm, you can't like pass the ball to someone else, like it's, it's you, right? It's just you and that other person, right? It's like woman against woman in there, that girl's coming to punch you, it's like, it's just, it's you and that person. And you're right. When they move, you don't know how they're going to move. You respond yeah. by hopefully defensively properly, right? Yeah. Encounter. And walk into a punch. Yeah. yeah. And so it is a dance like that. And it is timing and it's balance and it's hand-eye stuff. And so a lot of things that being an actor, especially a stage actor, is important. And, you know, if you go to theater school, they will... A lot of them do have like specific movement class and um, contact improv, which is a form of dance when every move you're all touching and rolling on people and on the ground and you kind of flow with that that other other person's mm -hmm. movement with you. Um, they also have a lot of theater schools will do like um, sword fighting, things like that, mm -hmm. which again, like fencing is that same thing. It's one on one, that sort of boxing, give and take, move with that person. So I think what you're onto there is something that is really a classical uh, theater sort of concept and you uh, you hit it on the head I think modern day actors film and TV actors should do a little bit of that and mm -hmm. it's because I wouldn't mind punching a lot of them in the face. <laughs> I, I understand that. No, I'm sorry. I, um, and then ending on another funny note and it's something that took me a little while to get used to but you know watching uh, and speaking of real uh, men uh, Eric Watching those forearms, I could not get over how muscular and huge those forearms were. You know, that made me, I li I'm going to show you. I literally have, after watching, after watching, I think I, oh, by the way, here's, here's the screen, right? This is where, this is where I do my auditions. And then this comes down. So I move the whole table nicely done. We're not going to cut this part out, people. So watching those forearms made me buy this. So on my desk, I have this so I can actually do these exercises because of Eric made it. He's, he's a specimen, man. He's a specimen. He, it's like, yeah, he's built for sure. I'll tell you, though, I don't, I don't know you like I, we haven't met an actual person, so I can't say. But I will say something, Alan. I can sit with those hand grips for 20 hours a day. I'm never going to have forearms like Eric. I'm never going to be a real man. Okay, Dad, fine. But I, man, like some of us, nah, you just either got it or you don't. And I don't got the maybeus. I don't got a lot of the maybeus, <laughs> you know. So I got, 
I have his heart and his trust and his undying friendship. But I don't got a lot of the maybeus, you know, and the, and the forearms are, they're not on the list. But yeah. Yeah. it's important that we do take a moment to acknowledge how dope Eric Mabius is. He's one of my best friends. So I'm yeah. sending love to him right now. And, you know, obviously, Chris and Crystal and Jeff, these are my mm -hmm. homies. Martha, my saint, she's uh, amazing. And, um, you know, everybody in SSD is, is, is top notch. But, um, but me and Eric had some good hangs uh, when he was up here. Um, so, yeah, it's great. Yeah, shout out to that guy. Too many, too many miles, too many leagues between us. It's a shame. But um, yeah, such is life sometimes, especially during yeah. pandemics. Yeah, and Eric has been invited. Eric, if you're watching, please come down. Uh, I've had a chance to speak to uh, to you know the three musketeers. By the way, uh, Zach, you're the fifth musketeer. That's how they view you. Uh, so I don't know if that would make you D'Artagnan uh, in this particular case. Uh, I think it wow. may. Uh, so, but uh, Eric, please let's complete the uh, the the four musketeer uh, uh, you know scenario. Uh, you're the only one that's missing. Do you know if anybody wants to see me play a musketeer? I, I wrote that down. I wrote it down in a series called Young Blades yep. with with Sheena Easton, if you remember her, like the singer, the Scottish singer, and mm -hmm. Bruce Boxleitner, who is Tron from the original Tron, the movie Tron. Mm -hmm. He's Tron, Bruce mm -hmm. Boxleitner, um, and lots of other stuff. Um, but yeah, it's called Young Blades and the character's name was Ramon. Ramon Montalvo Francisco de la Cruz. And, and there are, um, and uh, yeah, so you can see me. I was not D'Artagnan. I think Eric would be D'Artagnan in our show. I think he'd have uh, Or Aramis. What's that? Or Aramis. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. But Aramis is, is very suave, uh, but it's just the spiritual part of it. I, I think you would uh, be a really good Aramis. Thank you. But I did like that you thought I'd be D'Artagnan because he's kind of like the. I think so. D'Artagnan is the reason I, I watched D'Artagnan uh, as a kid. I think I was five years old and I saw The Three Musketeers. It was back in Russia. It was the Russian version of it. I completely fell in love with it. My first sport was uh, fencing. Uh, and I was doing rapier because of The Three Musketeers. I have Dumas wow. books. Uh, so uh, fencing was my first technically martial art and uh, my first sport. And did you, you'd mentioned earlier, so back in Russia, you said, huh? you're you from Russia? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And you said you were baptized by a Ukrainian uh, Orthodox? Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Yeah. Great, great. Um, <laughs> well, shout outs to Oleksandr Usyk from the Ukraine, who mm -hmm. last night became the unified world champion, heavyweight champion. He was a like, heavy than a cruiserweight. He's an Olympic gold medalist for the Ukraine. He beat yeah. Anthony Joshua in front of yeah. 75,000 people in Tottenham Stadium. Outboxed yeah. the giant, amazing gold medalist, world champion boxer. Your Ukrainian, uh, well, if you're Russian, but there's some Ukrainian baptism in there, so I'm going to throw well, it in here. You're, I'm you're, from you're, Ukraine, technically. So, okay. Uh, so you're, I'll, you're I'll country take country. It's a good weekend for you guys. Yeah. Alexander Usyk. Yeah. Us. No, that, Us is, is a reference to a really funny man who's doing another bit. Uh, Master Ken, if anybody is interested. I don't think that's an SSD audience, but uh, Master Ken, you know, anytime he finishes, he goes like, Us. Oh, cool. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, Zach, it's it's fantastic talking to you. I'm really happy uh, you you had a chance to spend some time with me and the audience. Thank you so much for coming. My absolute pleasure, Alan. It's been a treat, and um, yeah, very very enjoyable. And I also feel anytime I do these, especially if it's being delivered properly, presented with that sort of care, and I always feel like I'm talking, I'm reaching our fans in a little bit. So for me, this is yeah, I couldn't do it without you. So. We all appreciate it from SSD because it's it's another it's another media for us to get get through to the people that we have this love for this mutual sort of reciprocal thing that we have with you guys. So shout outs to everybody for supporting us and much kudos to you, Alan, for this great show, the great platform, for being a great host and for being a thoughtful artist 
and uh, you know, I'm wishing this year to be the best for you too with your auditions and all your endeavors. Thank you very much. I have an audition coming up right after we're done with this, so. <laughs> let's Break a leg, my brother. Keeping fingers crossed for that. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in into another episode of Let's Dive In. Um, I know I enjoyed it and I'm hoping you'll enjoy it as well. See you in the next one. Take care. Everybody.